Hello, welcome to Sound and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I'm Tina. Today I'm talking about the self-published science fiction competition number four, the SBSFC four. <laughs> I almost said three because I was a judge in number three last year. Obviously, I am a judge this year in number four. I am part of Team Space Girls this time around, uh, which is different from last year. So I'm really excited to kind of meet some new people and hear kind of how they'd like to judge books. Uh, so this video is just going to be me going through how I'm approaching the competition this year as a judge because I'm changing a few things. Uh, you know, obviously, we're all human and we make mistakes and we learn from them and we adapt. At least that's the goal. So. Uh, this time around, also, we've been assigned a lot more books. We've been assigned 30 books to assign a yes or no to. So essentially, the competition, everybody sends in their books. There's like 200 or something. Those get divided by all the teams. The teams read the initial batch of them and decide as a team whether we're going to move forward with with them or not. So I think we're trying to aim for 10 of them. And then we send three into the semis and then we read all the finals and vote on the finals. So that's kind of, it's, I think we did the same thing last year. It's just this year there are 30 books instead of like 15 or whatever. So we're to read up to about 30% of each book. We then, depending on how many get yes or no, we might have to read, as I said, up to 10 in order to pass those on into the semis. I'm doing what I did last year, which is where I'm not going to look at the covers or read the blurbs before I read these. I think this is the fairest way to do it, as then I'm not swayed by something from the blurb or the cover. Uh, we have until early January to read through these, so in late December or early January, depending when I get through them all, I'm going to do a video where I, where I go through all 30 of them, I'll tell you which ones I voted yes or no on, and I'm going to read all the blurbs and show the covers. This way the authors, you know, will get their book showcased even if the books don't move on to the semis. For the full reads, semis, and finalists, we're going to be giving them a ranking as we did last year. I learned from last time that I'm not going to be rating each book at each level until I've read all the books at that level. <laughs> this way, while I'll have an initial number after reading each book, you know, I'm going to obviously write it down, I will then be comparing them against one another in that level in order to get the ranking I will be officially submitting for each of them. I think this might work better for me, as last year I was irritated with myself because the first book I ranked I gave a higher score than in retrospect I would have given compared to the others, simply because when I review books not for competition I'm a bit... I guess not nicer, but I'm less picky. <laughs> I'm more subjective. Uh, yeah, I definitely am less picky. I'm a very high rater, really. Like I give most books four or five stars. Not because I just find the stars completely arbitrary, to be honest. And I just don't think that, you know, and because I kind of work, and because I work in the industry, I understand how these stupid stars actually affect sales, especially for like small press, small presses and like indie books. So I'm like, well, just because I didn't think it was a perfect book, I'm still going to give you a five kind of thing. So I will be giving full reviews on my channel, on my Instagram, on Goodreads for everything that I read in full. How do I judge? Well, I kind of look at the book in terms of... Uh, levels. So you have level one, grammar, typos, basic stuff. If I'm distracted by stuff that, you know, is sentence level, that's something that can bump a book down lower than the others. Like, have you had a proofread? I can tell if you haven't. So yeah. Uh, then we have kind of what I would consider like the copy or line editing level, which is where I focus on how the narrative flows. Does it suck me in? Is the dialogue engaging? Are the descriptions easy to picture? Then we have the developmental edit kind of level where I look at it, where, you know, it has to deal with the consistency of the story overall, the plot, you know, the characters. Do they make sense? Do their motivations make sense? Does the world building flow? Um, and is it missing something? Are women characters actual characters and not stereotypes? Have they, do they have impact on the plot rather than just being set pieces or girlfriends of the male characters? If there are queer characters, do they have personality aside from their sexuality? Does the plot have a satisfying ending or an exciting climax? Does the denouement answer any outstanding questions? Essentially, does the book tie together well? Do I feel satisfied after reading it? Now, why am I qualified to be a judge? Well, if you check out my channel, I read a lot of sci-fi. <laughs> I'm also an editor, so I have that deeper understanding of narrative craft. And I work in the industry. <laughs> I'm a fair person who wants to support indie writers, given I am one myself. My, my own book, What Branches Grow, was a semi-finalist in the first SBSFC. And my second book, es Burke, my second book, Escaping First Contact, I entered it and didn't get too far. <laughs> Granted, it's a bit weird. But there's something else that I suspect happened, but I'm not going to get into it because it's just conjecture on my part. But anyway, um, I like to help out indie authors because I'm one myself, and that's why I'm doing this. Of course, judging is also subjective, so I'm going to try not to lean towards tropes, tropes I love, essentially anything to do with aliens, and not try to lean away from tropes I'm not interested in, for example, AI, 
and sci-fi fantasy. <laughs> yeah, so, but the thing is, just because sci-fi fantasy or AI, books about AI are not typically my jam, there are books about those things that I really, really enjoyed. Like, for example, I have The Sea of Rust, and that's all robots, you know, so there we go. So it's not like those things, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to go into everything open-minded, just because it's not a trope I would personally pay for, like if I were buying it on Amazon or someplace, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to give it my full go. You know, the old college try so there you have it i wish all the competitors the best of luck i look forward to reading all of your books so yeah 